Joining me now is Mark Meadows. Look who's here, White House Chief of Staff for the first time. Hey, Mark, it's great to have you on it's for the first time you. on the show. Thanks. It's good to see no, you. Thank you. Hey, let's take care of this headline. I hate to hit you hard with this one. Reports <laughs> coming out of D.C. that the president, <laughs> the president is denying that he said he wants to fire you after the election. What's <laughs> going on down there? Well, let me just tell you, there's all kinds of report. The drama gets big, but I can tell you the president and I enjoy not only a, a good relationship, but a great relationship. We're going to continue to work together. Uh, we're going to win this election. And more importantly, we're going to deliver on behalf of the American people. Uh, he is on message, but he's also over the target in making sure that the American people understand that there's one candidate who has fought for them and will continue to fight for them, and that's Donald J. Trump. Did you suggest that the Trump campaign should sue Twitter over censorship because it suppressed the Hunter Biden story? Is that what you suggested? Well, obviously, we see that, that election interference uh, is really more what Twitter and Facebook seems to be about in the last few days than it is about making sure that it's a, a impartial platform that other people can uh, post information on. So uh, the Senate is right to go ahead and have some of these people come in and, and uh, actually uh, testify before the Senate and finally uh, confess what we've all known is, listen, there's an inherent bias by these social media companies against some conservatives. I was one of four congressional conservatives that Twitter went after uh, years ago, and yet what they're finding now is they're going to have a bipartisan backlash, and so whether it's, it's the administration suing them, whether it's FEC complaints, or whether it's congressional action, I think that we'll all all come together. I think a perfect place for that would be uh, in December when we actually look at some additional funding measures. Let's go ahead and revoke uh, 230 proposition there uh, where we don't give them the liability protection that so many of these companies have enjoyed. It's time that we let the trial attorneys go after them and put them out of business. All right, let's talk about this audio of the Trump phone call with campaign staffers that came out today. He's talking about a victory. He really went hard after, he went after Dr. Fauci, slamming the Biden's criminal, quote, criminal enterprise, slamming the media for getting stories wrong. Um, also this, we're, we're just watching the polls coming in, sir, and, um, you know, it looks like it, some of the polls, we understand there's questions about who they're sampling. We get that. But the national average of nine polls shows that it is neck and neck. Reince Priebus, former Trump staffer, said it is neck and neck. That th there's concern that the president, his rhetoric is too heated, too hot, uh, too vituperative, that the pandemic moms, the former soccer moms, or, or that the president is worried about losing the suburban vote. What do you say to that? Well, I can tell you that the polls that we're looking at, both internal and even some of those public polls that are tightening right now, the closer we get to the election, it's amazing how these suppression polls uh, get less... Uh, I guess, uh, extreme in terms of their measuring. Uh, everything is tightening. Uh, listen, this is all about turnout, but I can tell you this. The president has been very consistent. We need to make sure that we have a therapeutic. We need to make sure that the very drugs that he was able to be treated with uh, as the president of the United States are available to everyone. We need to make sure that those emergency youth authoriz authorizations get uh, actually uh, completed and approved uh, so that Americans have have some kind of result. Listen, uh, Joe Biden doesn't really have a plan for the coronavirus. He, he thinks that we ought to be locking people down, mandating uh, masks, and, and that's his plan. That's not a plan. That's what he's been doing for the last nine months, and it hasn't done anything. And so here's the time that we really need to focus on looking forward. This president has delivered. He continues to deliver. He, listen, the president is not a politician. He's a business guy. He, he gets paid for getting things done. And you may not appreciate the style, but I certainly love the results. I hear what you're saying. Now, we're, are we going to see a new COVID-19 relief bill with Nancy Pelosi by her deadline that she's put up of tomorrow? Uh, is Nancy Pelosi moving the goalposts on this COVID relief? Is she moving the goalposts on it? 
Well, she's been moving the goalposts for 90 days. You know, I served four terms in Congress, and I never had an October 20th deadline for anything. So this arbitrary deadline that the Speaker put forth uh, is really something more about her playing politics and trying to blame President Trump for not dealing with uh, this COVID relief package. Let me tell you, he has not only instructed Secretary Mnuchin and myself to continue to stay at the table and try to go ahead and give concessions, we have given concessions over and over and over again. There's one person who really hasn't conceded anything over the last 60 days, which has been Speaker Pelosi. At the same time, I'm, I'm very hopeful that we can get there. The president has shown great flexibility, but it's time that we get some relief to the American people, those that are hurting, through no fault of their own. This pandemic was, uh, was brought to us via China. It wasn't anything that... Uh, the American people brought them upon themselves. So it's time that we actually get them some relief. Well, she wants national testing standards. She wants a national standard on masks, uh, on treatment. Um, you know, Secretary Mnuchin said Pelosi and the Democrats don't want to give a victory to President Trump. And you, you see that rhetoric and that, you know, coming out of Nancy Pelosi. And then you see the governor of Illinois, who was criticized for his state's shutdown. The governor of Illinois is blaming Trump for his state's shutdown. When you see that those headlines, what's your first reaction? Well, the governor of Illinois couldn't find the facts if 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 it were right there in front of his face. You know, it's it's like uh, blaming uh, someone being overweight on Twinkies. I mean, you know, at, at the same time, here's what we have to make sure of: is the governor of Illinois is a partisan hack that continues to not represent the people of Illinois in a proper manner, and so anything that he talks about is really not based on facts. Let's let's go ahead and and circle into it. Exactly what the president continues to do. He continues to challenge me as well as others to make sure that the health, safety, and welfare of the American people are put first. And even in his rallies, you know, he talks about we're going to make America safe again. Well, it's all about safety. He's going to, he's committed to do that. He's called us to have all hands on deck to do that. You know, but any, uh, Listen, any, any comments from the Illinois governor, uh, governor is seen as really comments from the peanut gallery, and they're, they're not really uh, thought of in a, uh, a full and respected way here at the White House. I hear what you're saying. What's going to be the price tag on COVID-19 relief? Because 8 million more people have uh, dropped into poverty since the lockdowns began. Is it going to be $300 billion, $500 billion? What is it going to be? Senator Mitch McConnell is talking about a, floor, a, vote, a, a bill to the floor this Wednesday. What price tag are we looking at right now? Well, uh, Leader McConnell is looking at uh, what we believe that we have at least uh, 50 Republican senators or more that are willing to sign on to as a foundation, as a building block uh, for for adding to that. Uh, his proposal is in the $500 billion uh, range, uh, but that's not where we end up with. I, I think the president has been very clear. He's uh, been willing to go big. Uh, and, and on that, it's all about making sure that the, the hardworking American taxpayers that are hurting in this pandemic get the relief and that not some special interest group or special project that Speaker Pelosi has uh, put forth uh, actually ends up being the beneficiary. And so, so the president is real clear. Hopefully, Leader McConnell has a good foundation that starts at that $500 billion, and then we can add to that as we can agree in a bipartisan ma manner. All right, let's talk about the debates uh, coming Thursday night. The Biden campaign has, has called a, quote, lid. The, Joe Biden will not be com coming out on the campaign trail until after the debates Thursday night. What is the president's strategy going in? Is he still going to go hammer and tong at Joe Biden, go after Hunter Biden? Is he going to dial back on the interruptions? Because he interrupted a lot. What's the strategy? Well, uh, let me just say, it's not a surprise to me that uh, here we are, the very first of the week, and that Joe Biden is putting a lid on everything because he's been putting a lid on what he means by court packing or whether he's for it or against it. And But he's also not wanting to answer the critical questions, what he knew about Hunter Biden's uh, corrupt, uh, alleged corrupt activities, what he knew about the interference. You know, I, I find it fascinating that some of the monies uh, that appear to be flowing to the Biden Biden family broadly uh, come from Romania, from Ukraine, and from China. Yeah, the very three countries 
that Joe Biden was a uh, special envoy to. You know, when you start to look at this, uh, you know, the, the comparisons are, are very troubling. He's going to have a lot of explaining to do in the next few days. So it's not, it's not surprising they'd say, we're not going to talk to the press. So to answer your question, how is the president going Could to you- prepare for the, deba- the, the debates? Literally, it's about making sure that the messages that he has carried to the American people get articulated fully. Uh, we, we also yeah. understand that, that Joe Biden started the interruptions and, and the president pressed back. Uh, I think what you'll see is, is a whole lot of Joe Biden being able to try to explain himself to the American people with a plan okay. that hasn't worked for 47 years. It's not going to work on that night either. Did you mean to say Russia and not Romania? It's Russia, Ukraine, and China is the allegation about well, Hunter actually, Biden's influence. I, 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 I actually is mentioned, Romania the new country? I, I actually mentioned Romania, so I think in the days to come you'll see a Romanian connection as well. Oh, wow. All right. Well, that's news there. Mark Meadows, it's your debut on Evening End, and you did great. White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows right there. Thank you so, so much for joining us. Come back soon, okay? All right. Thank you. Take care.